Hi everybody, it's Micheline from Michelle Makes again. Um, not wearing anything in particular, in fact I am busy sewing, doing a vlog showing you how to make this top. You can't see it, I can't show you it, but that's it inside out and this is the right way. And it's for someone who asked me if I could show her how to do it. It's a Lakala top, so if you wait in, in probably in the next next vlog or two you will see what it is it's taken me a while to get going not because this has taken me a while but with having holidays and everything else i have i had promised uh, the reader and i can't remember your name that i would do it and i never got around to doing it so done it started this afternoon it's a normally if you were making it without doing a demonstration and explaining i would have had it made in an hour it's one of those kind of blouses that you can make an hour it's, there you go i've let you in on the secret it's a blouse it's a blouse that you can make in about an hour or two if you're not very adept at it or maybe three if you're really novice but it's a nice little pattern and i'm busy doing a kind of um uh, what do you call it uh, so long so long to it and I'm just busy doing the sleeve hem so very close to finishing this is a shirt that I bought from the shop East it was in the town that my daughter lives in I was walking around the town when the kids were little it's a good few years ago and I thought it was lovely I bought it and then I didn't wear it very often. I wore it a couple of times and then didn't wear it very often. I do like it because it's baggy, because it covers any bumps and bulges and it's like a little jacket. So, didn't wear it very often and I put it up on eBay and sold it. And thankfully, the person who bought it, when I sent it to her, she wanted to send it back because she said there were two marks on it that she what wasn't happy about and there were two marks that I didn't even know were on and um, so she sent it back and I'm pretty thankful because I, when it came back I thought what on earth did you sell that for because I liked it and I thought you're silly silly woman but the two marks where were the two marks they were up here two tiny little marks that were up here they've gone now it was since I washed a couple of times but the two marks there was one here and one there and I think there were marks for where to cite the colour but this person obviously I think they were going to be reselling it at a, at a quite a good price so I I think I paid about 40 or 50 pound for it so I, I thought about it and I thought you silly woman what did you sell it for you, you know it, you're still going to get some wear out of it so I do wear it now and again and I like it I like the shirt I'm starting to like these shirts these over shirts that we have that I that I have and I might be making some more you never know um I'm very late to telling you two things you I asked you in a vlog a long time ago I think it was around about May what scissors you bought what scissors what scissors you use and what iron you use and I finally come to gather all the information together and here is a little rundown of what you told me your favorite scissors were and your favorite iron I received quite a few names of irons. Here are a few that I'm going to list and here are a couple that show you what they can do.
Welcome to KaiScissors.com. I'm Jane Monzuras. Today we're talking about the Kai 8 inch dressmaking shears. If you're a dressmaker, a tailor, or love other sewing projects, these shears are for you. Their model numbers N5210, V5210 in Very Berry, V5210B in True Blue. The Kai 8 inch dressmaking shears are smooth and sharp to the tip. Because the blades are made of stainless steel with vanadium, it allows for a strong, sharp edge that can easily be resharpened later. The 5210 model is offered in black, very berry, true blue, and other limited colors. The very berry and true blue models come with a molded blade cap. The handles on these 8 inch dressmaking shears are made of a soft material, which is ideal if you're cutting multiple layers of fabric. The cushioned handles also make them easy to use for people with arthritis or limited hand strength. The most popular one seemed to be the Kai scissors and the most popular uh, most popular iron seemed to be the Rowenta. Uh, some of you strayed onto having ones where there was a steam tank which you said you liked. Other ones said that you had one a one that disconnected. Now I've got a one that completely disconnects. It basically I've got a base and then I can lift it off and I, once it's heated up I can use it independently. I like it, I bought it from a uh, little, it was only £20 or £15 and it's a good little iron, very very good with a little seam shot and I'll put a little video up here to let you see what it was like. <clears throat> this is one, uh, an iron that I bought from Lidl uh, a few weeks back. I wasn't sure if I liked it because it's actually one that you can remove from its base to so to iron. It's called a silver crest. It has got a good bit of power. Well, it won't have it when it's not connected. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let's get it connected. You've got to connect it by putting on the base. And this is an, a lock and unlock section there. Um, and then when you want to take it off, um, I can't really do it with one hand. When you want to take it off, you move that lever across. Uh-oh, here's trouble. Here's trouble. Have you come to see me, trouble? Yeah? Yeah, I know. You heard me talking and you thought you'd come and make a bit of noise. Anyway, this, um, if I can prop it up perhaps, then you might just be able to see it better. If I put that like that. Right. And it unlocks by moving this lever and that un undoes. And the, I do like it for a number of reasons. Let me pick it back up to let you see. When I do that, press the button. Oh no, there, it gives you a good jet of, of steam. I like that. Uh, also, it's got a nice sole plate, lots of holes in it so that the steam comes out um, nicely. Look at that. Whoa. And this was only about £15 from, I, from Lidl. It's got uh, steam, different strengths of steam I've got on high. And um, at the bottom the dial says max right well as you would expect max but it's got a button there that says self clean typical woman i haven't read the instructions so i'm not sure what you do with the self steam but i do like it the thing i like it for is when i am not using it i just disconnect it from here i disconnect it from here so that it's not connected to the electricity and I have an awful habit of leaving the iron on. So that way it's not going to be on. Did you enjoy that? Well, that was the first part. Now, the second part was that um, I then asked you in a further vlog, what is the oldest tool that you have in your sewing room? And I got some lovely, lovely answers. And so what I'm going to do is do another little, a little, a little piece about what is the oldest tool in your sewing room. So here we go. Can you hear her ladyship? She wants her tea. 
I better go and give her a tea. I'll catch you in a minute. And so we come to the oldest tool in your sewing room. And uh, I got some really lovely comments from you all. Kez44 says her oldest sewing equipment is an orange pair of fisher scissors bought to start boarding school in 1984 and she's still got her name tape on it and she inherited her granny's button box probably containing buttons from the 1930s onwards. Kathy Fish says my oldest item is a tiny sim silver thimble too small for my fingers. It belonged to my great grandmother and I only have a vague recollection of her. I have no idea how old it is I'm 71, so I suppose it could be over 100 years old. I believe Granny Crisp used to take my mum to the big house. They lived in a village in Cambridge and they, she would go there to do the mending. And her mum had five sisters and she was the only one who could sew. New Creation says she loves old vintage tools and an old friend gave her a rug prodding tools and a darning toadstool from Scotland. I've been, I dictated this to my, my, um, I dictated this to Word and I didn't really check it up beforehand and I've got some of the, some of the weirdest words and I'm having to translate what they've said. A, a darning toadstool but it's come out as toadstool. Uh, someone, an old friend gave us some rug prodding tools and a darning toadstool. My mother had one of those little toadstool, I'll put a picture up there from Scotland. She also owns a necky sewing machine from the 70s. My husband but uh, New Creations also owns a necky sewing machine from the 70s. Her husband bought it when he was stationed in Malta from a trade fair and it still goes. Patty Isaacson says the oldest sewing thing in her sewing tool in her sewing machine the oldest sewing tool in her room, sewing room, I can't get this out, is her Kenmore sewing machine. And I looked that up because apparently it's from 1980 and she's not sure if it works because she's been using her Eleanor sewing machine instead. But the Kenmore is a British made or it, it was sold in Britain. I'm not, I, I've got a rough, remem rough memory of the Kenmore but I'm sure you lot will tell me a lot more about it down below. Lana Ashley, hi Lana, says that her oldest tool would be a sewing machine that she learned to sew on way, way long, long time ago. It's a black Singer featherweight from the late 1940s to early 1950s. It was her mother's and it's on display in her sewing room today. Sue Kay has her 92-year-old mother's 1972 Singer. And while she hasn't had a chance to use it, she knows it'll be a wonderful machine to use. Sue Riley has a very old wood sock, wooden sock darner, which is like the toadstool, the little toadstool one, that she got from her grandmother, as well as her treadle sewing, singer sewing machine. I used to have a treadle sewing machine. I'm really annoyed because 30, 40 years ago, I had a treadle sewing machine. We had, in my mother's house, we had two singer machines, one that you turn the handle and one that was a treadle. And... In those days when new machines came out, you just didn't want them. And I can't even remember what I did with them. They probably went to the tip or skip or somewhere. And it's such a shame because they were really nice sewing machines. And I wish I'd kept them. Because these treadle ones are really good for working with... The, the, they're hard wearing, they're robust and they're good for working with leather and heavy, heavy fabrics. Vicky Harold is sewing... Her sewing thing is her grandmother's tin with embroidery threads and needles in it. She's 68, so things are old. So these things are old, but she says she still uses them from time to time. And she's also got a pin cushion her daughter made for her when she was five. Her children think it's funny that I that she still uses it, but she sees her sweet five-year-old face when she was when she gave it to her. I have a little uh, a little tapestry one that my daughter did when she was 10 and I, it, oh, in fact it may even be my son, that I think it was my son did it when he was 10 years old and I love it. I, he would probably say, mum what are you keeping it for? But you know you've got a little bit of nostal nostalgia to think that that was my little boy made that. Um, 
Christina Tippett Tippers. She has a lot of sewing machines. After I did that vlog that says what's your oldest tool, Christina messaged down and these are all her pictures that she put down showing me all of her machines and she says I have a lot of machines and I mean a lot of machines. Her oldest machine is the 1907 hand turned singer sewing machine followed closely let me just move this page down followed closely by one from 1912. The 1907 is out of her case at the moment for a tidy up but when she's back I'll take some pictures for you. Other than that she's got a 1950 silver thimble and some cotton reels that were gifted to her by an, a much loved and missed friend. They belonged to his wife who passed before she met him and is very sentimental and very, very well treasured. But Ruth, Ruth, I found out your name's Ruth because you told me. You have a Kenmore from 1969 and you did a search on it. And she found out that Kenmore machines was one of the last machines that were all metal and no plastic parts. But even they gave up and started using plastic around the mid 70s. They were made in Japan so the machine is considered desirable by connoisseurs. The one thing I have found is when I was looking, I watched certain vlogs on YouTube. And one is a man who collects bananas and he collects lots of vintage ones. And he was basically describing how he's got, he had one banana that had transparent parts to it on the machine. So he, you, he can actually see the workings going on. And I'll put a link to that above because I'm sure you'd be interested in watching it. And uh, he was basically singing the praises of the banana. And I, then I saw another one where apparently it's, it, this is just like you, you collect vintage cars or you collect vintage anything else then you collect vintage sewing machines as well and um i remember digressing a little bit i remember my father when he what he used to mend watches and one day they brought the digital watch out and he was leant over this bench mending it. and i'm sure i've told you this before and he just he says this watch is rubbish and i said what do you mean it's rubbish dad and he says there is no metal parts inside. It is all plastic. It is a throwaway world now. There is nothing metal. And basically what he was saying is that you're better to have something with metal parts than you are with plastic. Because once the plastic goes, they don't supply the spares for it anymore. Joanne Blair has a Singer featherweight that was made in the 1940s. Ursula Lamprecht says her dad bought her a Benina 1010 in 1990 and he said he, he knows she would use it well. She also has her mother's 830 Benina. Is mine an 830? No, I'm not sure what mine is. And she absolutely treasures it. Sheila Stamps has a brother exact model 1620 but she's having difficulty finding the age of it. I'll see if I can find out the age for you, Sheila. Deb Cobbs, Deb Cobbs's Mama's sewing machine is a Plymouth. Now that's another one I've heard of. A Plymouth. It's in a, it's in a pressed board box. It has a pressed board box bottom, and a removable top handle. It's a very very heavy machine, but it runs like a locomotive. It's straight stitch only, a treadle machine machine it's a straight stitch only machine she doesn't know how old it is except his mama said it was a treadle machine and daddy put a motor on it isn't that interesting and they did do that in those days they used to put motors on everything and mama said it was second hand when she bought it because it was all she could afford and she couldn't afford a new one i think she bought it around 1945 it's my oldest and was oldest sewing item except for the very old oil can that she used to oil, that she used to oil the machine. Angela's Singer Treadle in, is 110 years old and almost all of her vintage machines are 60 to 80 years old so Angela's another one who collects, collects machines. Cloreth Terahe, I hope I've said that right Cloreth, says she thinks the thing that she has that's oldest was some pinkies from her mother-in-law. Pinkies are pinking shears, I think. I think that's what you mean. 
But she remembers her mother's old machine, the one with the foot pedal that used to make it work. Teresa McCormick, made, she made me laugh because she said, I'm the oldest tool in the sewing room and that had me laughing my head off. And um, is this finally? Yes, I have one, which is fine and finally. Sue Knuckles. When she asked, when I asked who, what's your oldest tool, Christina Tipper sent me lots of photographs and Sue Knuckles sent me a video. Now Sue, this is such a long time ago, I couldn't find the video, but what I had done when you showed me the video, I went and looked on your post and you have some videos yourself. Sue has a little YouTube post, little, she hasn't got many subscribers, but I'm going to put the link above that she has because she has a 1951 Singer Featherweight 2211 sewing machine and this is a little link she talks to you and tells you all about the sewing machine. I've taken a few snippets of photographs to let you see from her video but it's well worth watching because she describes and she tells you all about it and it's got a buttonhole maker. I'm not, I didn't even know they had buttonhole makers in those days so it's well worth going to have a look and thank you very much Sue. So there you go. Those are all the old tools that you have told me about. And I'm going to have to hurry up and get this put up because I'm going away on holiday again on Saturday, on Friday and it is today, Wednesday. I'm going on holiday on Friday. Same place as I was at the start of the summer holidays. Only this time it's his Lordship's family that we're going with. We're in the same house as we were before. His lordship is coming with his all his all his grandkids. So um, if I I know you enjoyed the views of the bit of the sea. I if I remember, I shall take some more pictures for you to see. So in the meantime, till then, I've got another. Oh, I've got other videos to show you, but you'll just have to wait and see. And I might have some news for you by the time I come back from my holidays. Might. Catch you next time. Bye.